the first. There's Elliott, back under center. Hands it off to Byron Masseline, who finds some hole in the middle, and he is off to the races for a touchdown. Excellent blocking up front. Sprung him loose, and he goes off. 46 yards for a touchdown. I'll tell you what, Chris, to go from a spread formation to the wing tee and then to the wishbone really put your defense in a bind to have to adjust to every different formation that a team's running. Uh, and that's just a great job of execution. By the, give the credit to the offensive line uh, for giving Masseline a, a hole right there, and then he did the rest. And Masseline showed that he has a little bit of speed right there. Absolutely. As soon as he got through uh, the trouble there in the line, he broke away. So a 40-yard touchdown right there. Extra point pending. It's a bad snap. Jacob Hines having to just fall on it right there. So that will keep the score. First Academy, six. And Central Florida Christian Academy, nothing, with 10.47 left to go here in the first half. We're going to see both sides. We're going to see stamina tested on both sidelines here. First Academy coming into this game with 20 players on their roster. Central Florida Christian Academy with 21 on the roster. You see a lot of guys playing on both sides of the ball. You see endurance become an issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only are these guys, a lot of these guys going both ways, a lot of these guys that are going both ways are playing crucial positions Absolutely. on both sides of the football. Uh, so the, that's great point, Chris. That's going to be tested tonight. The endurance of these football teams uh, is certainly going to be tested. And now how does CFCA come back and respond? You know, give up a big touchdown play. But you certainly have the offense to go down and score yourself. How do you respond right here? Be a good test for this offense. Hopefully endurance is what gets tested tonight and not weather conditions. I start to feel a little wind pick up right here. I feel the cool breeze coming in. Yes. And being a Florida native, <laughs> central Florida native, I know what that means. We're probably going to be able to smell the rain here in a couple of minutes. Hopefully it doesn't Hopefully have not, that, though. that electric smell in it. That's <laughs> what I don't want to have. <laughs> I so agree. first academy kicking off, bounding kick right up the middle, fielded at about the 20-yard line. I think it was number 20, Jared Cunningham, on the carry. So they are going to take over at their own 35-yard line, down six points, plenty of time left, play about four yards. I'm having trouble adjusting, <laughs> adjusting <laughs> to this formation. Uh, it's it's certainly confusing me, but it's a great job um, by by Coach Monty Van for CFCA creating something like this and having two athletes that he's he's figuring out how to utilize. So second down and five. Again, two quarterbacks in the backfield. This time it's Moore who gets the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, gets it up short. About a yard short. That'll bring up third down and a long one. Nice run right up the middle for a couple of yards. Got to be able to convert on third and short. That's the point in your game you go back and look at it. Got to convert on third and short. You're seeing again, really pushing the momentum. This time Moore's going to keep it himself. He's going to get right across that first down line. So the clock will stop with that first down as Ben Moore gets to about the 46-yard line. But again, no break in the action. The offense staying out there, no huddle. First It'll Academy looks like they're adjusting pretty well. They don't look too tired yet. Time will only tell, though. It'll be Ben Moore going back to his shoe. That's the second time I've seen him go to his shoe. Again, two quarterbacks in the backfield. This time it's Jordan. Ball pops up. It's going to be incomplete. And intended receiver was number eight, Vaughn Diana. Looked like Ralph Balderamos had a chance at it, too. That's scary for an offense when you see the ball fly up in the air like that. Free luckily, ball. Luckily for Central Florida Christian, nobody came down with that one. So that'll bring up second down and 10. 9-15 left to go here in the first half. Again, two quarterbacks. Moore will take it. Hands it off to Jordan. Has his man open and overthrows him. Number seven, Jeremy Stone sprung free. 
We're seeing this two-quarterback set become very effective for Central Florida Christian. Great play call right there. like to see Elijah Jordan realize he have a little bit of time, not a lot of pressure, just throw that ball up in the air. You know, sometimes the hardest pass to make is when the guy is wide open because you're like, gosh, the last thing I want to do is miss this guy that's completely wide open. Um, but that may set something up uh, down the road in this football game. Looks like Jeremy uh, Stone had to come off there with an injury. He looked like he was limping a little bit down that left side. Might have had something to do with that pass. Third down and ten. This time Moore's going to keep it himself in the backfield. Ball will be complete. Number ten, Josh Lyle hauling that one in. Gain of only about two, though. So that'll bring up fourth down right at about midfield. Great job by First Academy keeping everybody in front of him. Not giving up the big play. I'm, I'm happy if I'm first academy. I'll give you three, four yards all day on third down. And then now you're going to have to go back and punt to the guy that just ran 46 yards for the touchdown and Byron Masseline. It doesn't, I, I would say that it doesn't look like they're all that excited about the punt. But again, it's Jordan who will punt it. We're going to see that bounding ball stop at about the 30-yard line and roll forward. Take a Central Florida Christian bounce to about the 28-yard line. Nope, 20, yeah, 28-yard line. That's where First Academy will take over on offense one more time with 8.25 left to go in the first half. Good crowd out here tonight, Chris. You can see that. Everybody comes prepared. The Phil. weather did not stop anybody from coming out. Really nice to see. Cooled off nicely. Really did. I have zero complaints right now. First Academy going with a little bit of a bunch there. This time the handoff to Byron Masseline worked once. Why not go back to him? He dances in the backfield, finds some room over to the left side. Well past the first down marker all the way to midfield. Byron Masseline is dangerous for First Academy. The junior, 5'7", 148 pounds. Uh, can do a lot. He's a, he's a guy that I certainly would start keying on a little bit if I'm CFCA. Let's let's know where number three is at all times um, because he can he can break off a big play like he's shown thus far tonight already. He's already got six touchdowns coming into this game. He had five a week ago against Seven Rivers Christian. So that brings up first down. This time straight up the middle. We we'll see a flag on the play. Hard to tell from here what that's going to be. Maybe some type of offsides, neutral zone infraction. Couldn't really tell. False start. That flag all the way over here on the sideline. Sideline warning. Hard to believe there's a sideline warning with only... <laughs> there's not much sideline. I guess they really want to enforce it. Only about 10 guys on the sideline there for CFCA. All right, so just a warning. That ball is spotted right at midfield at the 50. So there's Masseline again, springing free to the right side. Makes a move. Gets out of bounds. Not before he gets the first down one more time. Byron Masseline, give the offensive line a little bit of credit. Did a great job allowing Masseline to get to the edge. Masseline then using his speed to get down the field. Masseline is going both ways as well. Looks like he's getting a little bit tired. Does look that way, but he's back into the huddle. What Pretty much you're, you're hearing, yeah, yeah, Byron, it's, it's going to be you. It's going to be you one more time. First and 10, ball spotted at the 35-yard line of Central Florida Christian. I wouldn't be surprised if Sandy Edwards takes it right here up the middle. This time, a little change, change in the formation. Number one, Dalton Thomas moving in motion. He'll take that handoff. He'll get some positive yards up to about the 30-yard line. 29-yard line, that's where the ball is going to be spotted. It'll bring up second down. Second down to what, five? Second down to five, maybe four. Seeing almost an optical illusion here from this angle. I was about to say the Eagles look a little bit tired, but Central Florida Christian <laughs> starting to get a little bit tired here. That could apply to anybody, though. That yes. really could. Absolutely, in this game. So David Elliott, again, back under center. Wide receivers to his left and his right. Man moving in motion, but he goes back to number seven, Sandy Edwards. Freshman is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Bring up second down. Nope, third third down? 
Third, Third down. down. Dylan Meeks, number 51 for CFCA, having no part of that. It almost looks like, if you're watching this, it almost looks like First Academy is running away from Dylan Meeks going to the opposite side of the field or trying to run right at him and get a blocker on him. But Dylan Meeks, if you leave him unblocked, he's going to come in there and make a play. First Academy, perfectly comfortable. Let that clock run just that little bit. 6-12 left to go here in the first half. Third down and four to go. This time we've got a flag on the play. Have to check and see what that flag is going to be. Illegal formation? Not enough people here? Delay a game? Delay a game. Like I said, it took them an awful lot of time to get up to that line of scrimmage. And now, now with what they've been doing on the ground, First Academy, third and long, it'll be interesting to see if they allow David Elliott or if they call a play with David Elliott to put it in, in the air. But with what Brian, with, with Mr. Masseline's been doing so far. He was on the sideline right before that penalty, so it looked like maybe they were trying to give him a little bit of a blow and maybe come back out. But this time it's going to be Elliott looking to throw it. Man covered, still had a chance at it. Number 13, Caleb Punt, the intended receiver. He had a chance at it, but only after the defender looked like it was going to haul it in. Josh Lyle did a great job on the outside of staying on his receiver, not making too much contact, so you avoid the pass interference penalty. Gets his hand up in the air and does a great job of breaking that play apart. Looked like we were going to have our first turnover of the game, but that is not the case. First Academy staying out there on offense. Fourth down and nine to go. Elliott in the shotgun. He's going to pass again, this time a little high to his intended receiver, Byron Masseline. Big turnover on downs for CFCA. They looked a little bit tired there, but held strong. Give them a lot of credit. Held strong. Now they have just over five and a half minutes to put together a scoring drive, which is going to be crucial going into halftime. Can a stop like that really? I know the answer to this question, but can a stop like that really change momentum? Is that the spark that Central Florida Christian needs? Yeah, it can, it can create some momentum. You'd like to see... A turnover created, um, and, and sometimes that. But but what I'm seeing from First Academy is they've been able to create some big plays, and that's what that's what Central Florida Christian has not been able to do thus far is create a big play. And they have some guys that can create big plays with Ben Moore under center, uh, as well as uh, Elijah Jordan. So though you're going to look and see if both of those guys right now can make something happen. It's interesting to have two of your better athletes in the backfield at the same time. You would think you would see Elijah Jordan split out, so maybe they're throwing to him. Um, but And I can't. I still haven't figured out exactly uh, why Elijah Jordan's throwing the football. Um, but they need a big play, that's for sure. Elijah Jordan has completed a few passes so far this season. Yeah. A little, little bit of everything so far. He's got a passing touchdown. Was able to do that against Cornerstone Charter Academy in their last game. So they take over at their own 32-yard line. This time the handoff goes to Jared Cuttingham. Not seeing any panic really here in the Central Florida Christian Eagles. They're going to stay on the ground. It's only six points, 520 left to go here in the second quarter. Keep your eye on Josh Lyle in the slot receiver position right here. First Academy's giving him a little bit of cushion. Ben Moore, high snap. He brings it in. He looks over there for number 11, Alicia Jordan. That ball is complete and up to midfield for a first down. I apologize, Alicia. I've been calling him Elijah for the past 10 minutes. Alicia Jordan doing a great job, and that's what I'm talking about. Try to get the ball into your playmaker's hands. That's exactly what they're doing, starting to get a little bit of momentum. They clearly move him around everywhere on the field. Ball at the 50-yard line, first and 10. This time the handoff straight up the middle to number 20, Jared Cunningham. He is upended, some kind of tackle. Sandy Edwards coming in there. saying, You guys have been hitting me all night. It's my turn to get a little payback on the defensive side of the football. Almost a somersault tackle right there. 
Second down and six. Cunningham stays out there in the tailback, and he's going to get that handoff right back up to about the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Bring up third down and five. Well, they call it no gain on that play. So third down and five with 420 left to go in the first half. If you're first academy, where is Alicia Jordan on the football field? Because you're looking to get the ball to him, but Lyle in the slide has showed that he can make some plays as well. So still in the shotgun formation. It's Moore looking for Lyle this time. Ball a little high. Well covered by number five, Jonathan Punt. And what do you do here? you got four minutes left. Do you pin them back? Does CFCA try to pin back First Academy? Or do you try to get, you know, six, five, six yards right here and get the first down, get yourself some momentum going into halftime with being able to put some points on the board? Well, it looks like the offense is going to stay out there. Alicia Jordan's their punter, and he's split out to the left. Ben Moore is going to stay in the shotgun formation. High snap again. He's got four receivers. This time he puts it up, and it's intercepted. Number two, David Elliott comes down with the ball. Big pressure on Ben Moore, and he is slow to get up. A lot of pressure by First Academy there. And Ben Moore on fourth down, can't take a sack, got to get rid of the football, does a good job of doing that. Uh, And unfortunately, I had to do it a little too quick in the sequence uh, because his wide receivers were not able to get out into their routes. Looks like he's shaking off that right arm. But his coach tells him to stay out there. David Elliott, quarterback for First Academy, makes the interception, and now he's limping around a little bit. That's what you're going to see. A lot of these two-way players, endurance coming into the game here. 3.57 left to go in the first half. But Elliott is back in that shotgun formation at the 40. He hands it off to Byron Masseline. He gets it up the middle about three, call it four yards on that spot. Bring up second down and six as the clock runs. 341 left to go in the first half. As an offense that likes to run the football time and cl- clock management comes big into play big time right here. Being able to be aware of what timeouts you have. And being able to save some time on that clock. Elliot. Oh, that's going to be a flag. Saw number five, Jonathan Punt moving forward. We had motion on the right, motion forward on number five. Offside. False start. He was offside, technically. He was moving forward when he did it. So he was so forward, he was ahead of the line of scrimmage. And you know what that does right here, Chris, is it gives CFCA a little bit of opportunity to catch their breath as they seem to be on their heels a little bit as we get later into this second quarter. See if CA gets to catch their breath now. Let's see if that can play a factor in this drive. So I'll bring up second down and 11. The clock starts to roll again. 317 left to go. Elliott moving back under center. He's got his man in motion. Fakes to him. Hands it back to Masseline, but this time he doesn't get much. Loss of about one on the play as he tries to go to the left side. Again, if you don't put a blocker on Dylan Meeks, he's going to come in there and make a play. And that's exactly what he did right there. you got to find a way to block Dylan Meeks because he's going to come in there and cause havoc in this running game. Sorry, that time it was Sandy Edwards, ball carrier. Every once in a while they give Byron Masseline a little little breath. A little breath a just, little breather. Look, just look for the pink. Yeah, pink. Sandy Edwards is an all pink tonight. <laughs> I should be looking at that. It's a third down and 11 after no gain on that last play. 2.27 left to go in the first half. Back into the shotgun formation. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Elliott looking left. He puts it up. He's taking a shot, and it's complete to Byron Masseline. And no one's going to catch him. Second touchdown of the night for Byron Masseline. Got to give credit right there to David Elliott. Great throw. Led Brian Masseline down the left side, down the sidelines. Put it out in front of him and let your wide receiver, your playmaker, go make a play. And that's exactly what they did for a huge score. 
David Elliott coming into this game with five touchdowns passing, but only 172 yards in the air on the season. Did not expect that much of an aerial assault from First Academy, but they are sure bringing it in a lot of different ways here tonight. Now here's a formation. Some sort of two-point conversion right here, possibly. There's the ball. This time, Elliott pitches it back. Number five, Jonathan Punt, the ball carrier. So that makes the two-point conversion good. And it'll make the score. First Academy Eagles, 14. And Central Florida Christian, nothing. With 2.08 left to go in the first half. Still plenty of time on the clock here, Chris, for CFCA to be able to come down and put a drive together, obviously with Ben Moore at quarterback and Alicia Jordan on the outside. You have some guys that can can allow your offense to score quickly. have shown through the first couple of games of the season that they have the potential to score quickly. Uh, just got to catch their breath right now and gather themselves and put something together here. Take the punches. Just try and find your rhythm. They've tried a whole lot of different formations here tonight. You think they end up sticking with one or keep going with that change of formation almost every uh, set of downs? I think that when you go down 14, you got to realize that it's going to be hard to stop Byron Masseline uh, for, for First Academy. So you got to be able to put points on the board. So whatever you have to do to get your the ball in your best playmaker's hands, that's what you have to do, whether that's by putting Alicia Jordan on the outside at the receiver position or if that's in the backfield uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out here. So Jordan Ogburn is joined by number 10, Josh Lyle, to receive this kick. It's going to be field, fielded eventually there by Jordan Ogburn. He's trying to make a move, but he is eventually brought down right at the 20-yard line. Let that ball bounce in front of him there. Looked like he might let it go, try and get it out of bounds, get a little better field position. But they will take over at the 20-yard line with 2.01 left to go here in the first half. Quarterback's favorite time of the game, two minutes between before the half, two minutes before the end of the game. Have an opportunity to go down and score some points, give your team some momentum, keeping in mind that CFCA will be uh, receiving the football in the second half. So see if you can put a score together here, a field goal, and you have the opportunity to get the ball back at the beginning of the third quarter and really make this a ball game. We get a timeout here on the field with 2.01 left to go in the first half. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. So down 14, Central Florida Christian not wanting to fall too much farther behind here in the first half. They want to try and get this score a little bit closer so they can go into halftime with some momentum. And as you said, they are getting the ball back in the second half. Thought a big bug hit me. On yeah, the we had a small bug. <laughs> uh, I was trying to trying to help you out there. Appreciate that. We got to we got to help each other out here on this scaffolding. <laughs> So, again, it's Ben Moore and Alicia Jordan in the backfield. This time Jordan taking the snap on the option. He pitches it to Moore. He's going to take it out to about the 27-yard line. Going to bring up second down about seven. Going to spot that at the 28-yard line. Gain of about eight on that play. And, again, the no huddle. Clock is rolling here. Gotta, you got to start getting something going if you're trying to score points on this possession. 132 left to go in this first half. Again, the two quarterback set this time. Bad snap. Moore brings it in. Eludes one tackler. Tries to go forward for that first down. We saw him grab for that shoulder on the last series after he was almost sacked on the interception. And here he is down after that tackle. You like to see Ben Moore. I know he's trying to get the first down, but he's crucial to this football team and success that they're either going to have or not have this evening. I like to see him protect himself a little bit. The first thing that a defense wants to do when they have the opportunity to take a shot at the quarterback is do just that. They sure did. He did get the first down. Looks like they're going to spot that ball at about the 31-yard line. 
The clock will stop with 1.19 left to go here in the first half. And we'll see if Ben Moore is all right. He hurts them not only as their quarterback, but he's also, as you said before, starting defensive end. You saw on the, the last series, he had to stay right out there. Looked like he was a little shaky, but he went right back out on defense. And that may that may be more of, of a being a little bit tired and worn down right now, giving his team an opportunity to catch their breath maybe, giving himself an opportunity to catch their breath. But got to give it up for Ben Moore for what he's been able to do thus far this evening. Looks like it's ribs right there that he is reaching for. Yeah, he took a shot right in, right in the sternum. It can be a difficult area to take a, take a hit. But, again, a minute 19 left on the clock. You still want to try to put some points up on the board if you're CFCA, keeping in mind that you do not want to give the ball back to Mr. Masseline. Masseline can't get it right for some reason to give it back to him to have an opportunity to score before this half. So Alicia Jordan will stay in there as the lone quarterback five wides and he's going to keep it himself out of the spread formation he's going to dance a little bit get it across the 40 yard line up to about the 42 that's where they'll spot that ball clock will stop with the first down you're talking about keeping the ball in the hands of the playmakers Lisha Jordan not sending it to anybody else keeping it himself clock starts again with 51 Left to go in the first half. Jordan again looking to keep it himself. Finds his Ooh. way, eludes a couple of tacklers, gets up to just after the 45-yard line. But that clock will keep rolling. Big hit by Dalton Thomas coming in there. Putting a hit on Jordan. Such a Florida Christian using one of their timeouts right there. Running out of time. So to reset, 32 seconds left to go here in the first half. First Academy with a 14-point lead. Second down and 10. You have to see if Ben Moore is all right to come back in for this final drive or whether or not they keep him on the sideline through halftime. Looks like right now CFCA is just waiting for Alicia Jordan to hopefully break a long run here. But if Ben Moore can come back on the field... Uh, they have some guys that can make some plays. Josh Lyle had a catch in the beginning of the game where he's able to turn it around the corner for a couple of yards. And they're giving Josh Lyle a lot of cushion there in the slot position, slot receiver position. I'd be surprised to see them not go back to him. Alicia Jordan is three for seven on the season passing. He's got a touchdown. Does have one interception as well. You think back to this first quarter, or excuse me, this first half, to some of the plays that maybe didn't work you had in, an opportunity for a touchdown, wide open receiver for CFCA, and weren't able to convert. Can't in a game like this, can't let those opportunities pass you by. Well, the timeout work. Ben Moore is back under center. Actually in the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself. Right up to midfield. It's going to be about two yards short of a first down. So the clock will keep going. No, we're going to call. Looks like it's going to be another timeout by Central Florida Christian Academy. Looks like Ben Moore's ribs have spread to his leg. Are you surprised that immediately calls his own number, takes it off that left side, willing to take another hit? Gotta give First Academy credit right here for staying strong. Uh, and, and I think you, you, you start to understand what Central Florida Christian is trying to do with running from the quarterback position. But if I'm Coach Monty Van right now for CFCA, I'm saying, Ben, let's protect yourself a little bit, buddy. We got a whole other half to play here. We need you for the whole game. That's right. So crucial on both sides of the ball. But he is going to go gamely out there for third down and three with 23.6 seconds left to go here in this first half. Ball spotted right at midfield at the 50. In the shotgun, it's Ben Moore. He's going to drop back to pass. He's got his man open. Number 11, Alicia Jordan makes the catch. Out of bounds after the first down. A little bit of a high pass. I think Jordan bringing it in off the rebound. Great catch by Alicia Jordan. I think they were calling him inbounds, stopping the clock for the first down. 
And then we've got conversation uh, is going on right now about that. Absolutely. It looks like they're going to stay with the timeout. So he was probably tackled in bounds. It was very close. Hard to see from up here. But they're going to have to burn another timeout. Now you're getting into an opportunity. 15 seconds left on the clock. You can take Ben Moore has the arm now to take a shot down the field. It's Can this offensive line give him enough time to allow Josh Lyles, to allow Alicia to get down the field and make a play in the end zone? Ball is going to be spotted at the 40-yard line. Anticipate a whole lot of spread formation right here and just go? Yeah, let's do it. Let's throw the ball down the field. Let's try to give our playmakers an opportunity to make a play down the field. And if, <laughs> you know what, if I am firing mass line, I'm sitting back there saying, hey, throw it down here. I'm ready I'm ready to try to, to take this one to the house from off an interception. So it'll be interesting to see how these next two or three plays pan out. That's right. Byron Masseline lurking back there in the strong safety position. We already saw David Elliott with a pick earlier in this game, but both of them roving back there. Keeping that in mind. So 15.2 seconds left to go in this first half. Central Florida Christian down 14 in the shotgun. It's Moore. Eludes the first tackler. Goes deep. This time he had his man open. Jordan open briefly right before Masseline was coming to try and pick that ball off. Ball a little high on that. That throw. A little bit high. Mr. Moore did a good job of avoiding the rush. Just keeping the play alive and, and still being able to deliver a pass down the football field. Looking to the sidelines for the next play. 9.6 seconds left. Doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of decision. They're going to try and squeeze all four of these downs in in 9.6 seconds. Second down and 10 from the 40. Again, two quarterbacks set. This time it's Moore taking the snap. Wants to go deep. Can't find any opening. He's going to keep it himself, but with no timeouts left, that's going to bring the half to the close. So th at the end of the first half, it's First Academy 14 and Central Florida Christian nothing. So definitely stay tuned. We'll be back in a few moments on the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Don't go anywhere. It's Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports.
Hey, welcome to the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Coming to you from Eagle Field in Ocoee, Florida. I'm Chris Cause alongside Kyle Israel. Our halftime score, 14 to nothing. First Academy on top of Central Florida Christian Academy. Kyle, we saw a whole lot of offensive formations so far. Do you expect to see the same in the second half? Well, absolutely. By First Academy, they've they've run the wishbone, the wing tee, the spread, the pistol. They've they've really run everything. And and what they've been trying to do is find a way for David Elliott to get the ball in the hand of uh, number three By- Byron Masseline, and that's what they've been able to do. Whether it was a long touchdown pass or a long touchdown run, First Academy has done a great job at changing up the offensive schemes and and finding a way to get their ball in their playmakers' hands. And I can't emphasize how important that is. Um, at, at this level for a team that has to have a lot of guys going both ways, find ways to get the balls in your playmakers' hands and allow them to do what they do best, which is make plays. And so far, First Academy uh, has been the team that's been able to do that. On defense for Central Florida Christian Academy, what can you do to stop Byron Masselin? You certainly need to do whatever you can, whether uh, it's, it's through the blitz packages or, or through alignment, to find a way to have Dylan Meeks be around Byron Masseline uh, Maslin, excuse me, uh, wherever he is on the field. Obviously, you're not going to spread him out at cornerback if, if Maslin makes his way out there to the wide receiver position. But what can you do to fill up, di- free up Dylan Meek so that he can make some plays? He's shown uh, here in the first half that he's a guy that will come up, make a hit. And what those, what those type of hits that he's being able to deliver, Meeks is being able to deliver here in the first half, turn into in the second half is, is turnover opportunities, creating fumbles. Uh, and I think that's something that Central Florida Christian Academy is going to have to do here in the second half is find a way to create a turnover and get some momentum on their side. It's an awful lot of pressure to put on an eighth grader. That is a lot of pressure to put on an eighth grader, but he's shown so far that he can handle it. All right, that's going to do it for the PlayOnSports.com halftime show. Friday Night Football will return in just a few moments with the start of the second half right here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. You're watching PlayOnSports.com's presentation of Friday Night Football live from Ocoee, Florida. 
I'm Chris Cause with Kyle Israel. Whoa. Right there, you're seeing Central Florida Christian Academy get the ball in the second half, down 14 to nothing. They deferred on the coin toss, so they're gonna get the first possession here in the second half. Kyle, did uh, Coach O'Leary like to do that in UCF in your days? No, Coach O'Leary actually, we took the ball whenever we had the opportunity. He, he feels that uh, you only get so many opportunities to possess the football throughout the course of the game, and if we have an opportunity to take it right away, uh, maybe that creates some other opportunities down the road where we have one uh, more possession than the other team. I don't, I don't necessarily always agree with that, honestly, but um, that was just the way that he did it. It seems like coaches get into one camp or the other. Well, one really, or the other, absolutely. They really see it one way or another. So, again, the two quarterback set. This time Moore is going to keep it, send it back to Jordan. He's going to pitch it back on the end around. That's number 10, Josh Lyle. And he fumbles it on the goal line. We're going to see where that ball is going to be spotted. About the six-yard line. About the six-yard like. line. I thought it was one more. If I could only describe to you the view I have, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd know I'd confuse that with the goal line. <laughs> but it's about the six-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and 25. Certainly not the way the Eagles wanted to start the second half. Try to create something on offense here. Shoots himself in the foot a little bit. Again, another high snap. Ben Moore brings it in. He's going to be taken down, and the ball is going to be fumbled. Squirts out. And First Academy has recovered. If that first play was not the way they wanted to start the second half, I can't imagine how you would describe the second play. Well, going back to Coach O'Leary, he always used to tell us ball security is job security, yours and mine. Uh, and that's really important, especially inside your own red zone. Obviously, uh, that's not what you want to do to start off the second half. But again, an opportunity to create some momentum, a, a stop here. Not a turnover, but any type of a stop here at this point in the game is a momentum shifter for the CFCA uh, Eagles. So we'll see what they can do here on defense. First Academy coaching staff calling the timeout right there and jumping onto the field. Ecstatic with these turn of events here early on in the second half. Not even a minute has gone by. 55 seconds gone by here in the third quarter. You're back on your heels. You're down 14, and now... You fumbled after a trick play, two plays after a trick play. Mm -hmm. You're on your own 15. How far back on your heels are you? Pretty far, pretty far, almost falling down. But you got to do what you can to, uh, to hold your ground here. Uh, and obviously, uh, it's a little bit scary with the duo of Sandy Edwards and Byron Masseline uh, for First Academy. The, those are some potent running backs for them. Uh, and it's going to be hard to keep them from scoring. Uh, down here inside your own red zone. And those are the two running backs, two out of three, into the wishbone. This time it's Masseline. He's going to go off to the left. And finding the corner, he's going to be knocked out just short of the goal line, right inside. Almost tried to hold the ball, crossing that goal line, but he is going to be marked down at the one-half foot line. He might have hurt. That's going to be pretty close. Might have hurt himself running into that ditch over there. Well, it goes down it right goes into down that drainage ditch. Yeah. It sure does, right he, over on that left side. Be careful, Mr. Masseline. Masseline. How Can I fix that? <laughs> can, let's I, get that squared away. I picked away. one. I went with Masseline. Okay. And yep. I was hoping that was right. That's what we're doing. I'll at least be, uh, I'll be right, or, uh, right or wrong a lot of times. All right, Masseline. There we go. I apologize, Byron. Is that ball good enough for the first down? First and goal from the two-inch, and this time it's Sandy Edwards. The up back, he takes it in for the touchdown. Not very fancy. Sure is effective. Very effective there. First down and goal. Pound the rock a couple of times. See if you can get in, into the end zone, and that's exactly what they do. And if you're Central Florida Christian now, you just want to create some sort of big play. You have the playmakers to do it. I've shown that you have the playmakers to do it. Um, and this drive is going to be crucial uh, whether or not you can stay in this football game. Excuse me, this upcoming drive. Extra point pending right here. Quick change of personnel, it looks like, on the Central Florida Christian sideline. 
Last second change of personnel as number four, Kyle Milroy comes back out into the kick formation, kick defense. But Jacob Hines for first academy lines up the kick. It's up and good. Put that one in the pond. The net didn't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, That's right. Great kick. So that brings the score to 21 for first academy. And it's going to be zero still for Central Florida Christian. You know, I was able to see them come out of the tunnel. When they came out for halftime, they had plenty of energy. They were ready to go, ready to get back into this game. They're going to have to do it pretty quickly right here in this third quarter. Ben Moore, he's a junior. He's had some experience. A lot of the team's going to be looking at him and Alicia Jordan, the senior, uh, for some leadership here. You want to see these guys step up, keep their team in the game, uh, focused. Obviously, you're not going to make all the points back on one drive, but the the key aspect is you got to put some drives together, uh, and that's starting with one. So let's see if the senior, the junior and senior leadership of this football team can step up here and give them an opportunity to stay in this football game. It's certainly not over, but you got to start to make something happen here uh, early, early in the third quarter uh, if you want to stay in contention during this game. Last season, they we said it earlier, they had trouble scoring points, only scored 14 points all season in two games, one time scoring eight, the other time six. They have turned it around this season. So far, they've put up 126 points. They average 31 and a half a game. So far, they have been stymied by the defense of First Academy. So the kick is up. Going to be fielded at about the 15-yard line. That's number 10, Josh Lyle. Takes it up past the 30-yard line, up to about the 33-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will take over their second possession here of this second half. Do you lose some of the trick plays, try and get a little simpler to try and get momentum going here, Kyle? Yes, unless you're really, really comfortable with one or two of them, you may still try to use them, but you want to be able... Uh, you know, I'm surprised they haven't gone back to Josh Lyle. They hit him on a pass over the middle at the beginning of the game. I'm surprised they haven't gone back to him. But I'd try to get Josh Lyle in this game uh, involved in this football game. So, again, the two quarterback set. This time, Ben Moore takes the snap, keeps it himself. Gets up past the 35-yard line to about the 37-yard line. Don't mark it at the 36. That'll bring second down. Second down and about nine long eight again the two quarterback set feel like we should come up with a name for that oh man eagle set no eagle set i don't know <laughs> but this time more taking the snap handing it off to alicia jordan alicia, gets up get, alicia jordan had an opportunity to cut that football back and create a big run gain some yards like to see him uh, if you're the coaching staff, remind him that north and south is the way to go. East to west, you can run a long ways, but you're not going to gain too many yards. Gain of only about a half a yard on the play. That'll bring up third down and eight. Four wides, two QBs. This time, Ben Moore is going to keep it himself, but he doesn't go anywhere. Loses about a yard. This time, it's like Ben Moore getting down on one of his linemen right there. Josh Goins, hearing an earful. Is it a good idea to try and get in the face of the people who are protecting you? Ah, I never was really all about that unless it was uh, really warranted, but on third down and long to try to run the football and then get mad at the offensive line, it's hard, tough to do. Jay Cutler disagrees with you. But <laughs> yeah. here, the punt, Alicia Jordan gets it to about the 30-yard line. Fielded by number one, Dalton Thomas. He's going to take it up just short of the 50, just short of midfield right there. Return of about 28 on that play. Nice little gain on special teams. Again, you were talking about those hidden yards. Doesn't look like a lot, but moving that ball up to just short of midfield could put a whole lot of momentum in First Academy's way. Offense is happy every time you can get the ball uh, close to midfield to start a drive. Got to be very pleased with that field position so far in the second half. It's certainly gone the way of First Academy. So from the 48-yard line, First Academy takes over their own 48. 
8.57 left to go in the third quarter. Again, it's Brian Masseline. He goes off to the right, but he fumbles it. And Central Florida Christian gets that valuable, almost invaluable turnover right there. Masseline putting it on the carpet right at midfield. And the Eagles take over. That's exactly what you needed if you're Central Florida Christian Academy. You needed some sort of turnover as Byron Masseline is on the ground. You needed some type of, type of turnover to get some momentum going your way. Masseline still down after that fumble. Looks like they're trying to stretch him out. Be a cramping issue. It's a, trying to see the extent of the injury right here. Looks like it's probably cramping. It was a humid day earlier today here in Central Florida. Cooled off nicely this evening. Not too bad for the start of October, but could be cramping right now. Let me tell you, Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash play on network and do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight well tell your school to sign up for the play on sports school broadcast program the program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web for more information go to playonsports.com slash s b p so brian masseline is up limping off of the field Looks like his left leg can't even put any weight on it. We'll have to see. For First Academy, he's been so much of their offense, but little hidden gem there on defense in the strong safety position. I was confused. I thought it was his right leg. He might be cramping in both legs, but nonetheless, huge opportunity for Central Florida Christian to get themselves back in the game. And now... If you're quarterback Ben Moore, you know you have an opportunity with Byron Masseline going out of the game. You know there's a new safety back there. That's right. With 8.50 left to go here in the third quarter, Ben Moore back there, quarterback by himself. He's going to look to pass. He's got his man open. Number 10, Josh Lyle, open for just that brief moment. Took a little while for that ball to come down to him. Ben Moore just needs to settle down a little bit. He's got to understand that he has the arm to make all the throws that he needs to out here. Find Alicia Jordan. Find your good matchups. Understand that there's a new safety at the free safety position. You have an opportunity to make a play here. Moore again. Another high snap, but he's going to keep it himself. This time, some running room right up the middle. Across midfield to about the 42-yard line. Ball going to be spotted just ahead of that 42 yard line third down and a long three to go right here Moore checking the plays on his wristband back in the shotgun he's going to look to pass again this time he is sacked and fumbled ball rolling around and it's going to be picked up by first academy number 55 cameron bedford the freshman 5'4", 145, but Johnny on the spot right there. He hauls it in, and First Academy will take over inside Central Florida Christian Academy territory. Great play call by First Academy head coach. They bring the blitz with Sandy Edwards uh, down the backside. Byron Moore is looking the other way. Excuse me, Ben Moore looking the other way to the right side of the field. Sandy Edwards blitzes off the backside. Gets the blind side of Ben Moore, which obviously is a hard place to be hit when you're trying to deliver the football, and unfortunately they cough it up. He seemed genuinely surprised that all of a sudden that defender was bearing <laughs> down on him. That tends to happen. Sure does. Never fun. 8-10 left to go in the third. This time, David Elliott has a receiver open. He's not taken down. He's going to fumble it, though, after the reception. It's number nine, Luke Lee. Luke Lee, big tight end, 6'4", 165. Certainly tall tight end. There you go. You've seen him run in the wishbone pretty successfully throughout the course of the game. What's that setup? Play action pass with a tight end with the size of Luke Lee. Uh, 
They do a great job. David Elliott delivering a sharp pass out to the sideline. Uh, and luckily that ball, when it was fumbled, went out of bounds. So first the academy retained possession. That'll bring up first down at the 30-yard line of Central Florida Christian with 8.01 left to go here in the third. This time the handoff goes back. Number one, Dalton Thomas goes straight up the middle, finding all kinds of holes here. Not missing Byron Masseline so far after he went out with an injury. They've just found other people to pass the ball to, either pass or run. Got to give some credit to Trey Garrett, Colby, Russell, Harrison, Kelly, Ben Feuerstein, the offensive line for First Academy for creating some holes for these running backs this evening. Going to bring up second down. Nope, they're going to call that a first down. That was good enough for a first down right there. Handoff. Not much there for running back Caleb Punt. Caleb Punt moving in from the usual wide receiver position. Go ahead and take that handoff. No gain, so that'll bring up second down and 10. Big play right there, Central Florida Christian defense. Again, one of the things that First Academy likes to do is get ahead of the chains, get some yardage on first down so they can still have the option to run the football. You back them up a little bit, you force them to maybe do some things that they're not always comfortable doing, which is important for Central Florida Christian to get them in those type of situations. Caught a loss of a yard on that play, so second down at 11. Again, the handoff. This time, Sandy Edwards, the running back. Again, wearing the pink. Breast Cancer Awareness Month here. Yeah, absolutely. See that all over high school, college, NFL. That's right. That's right. Great it's cause. Important. Great cause. Great opportunity for the exposure um, for the support of that, of, uh, of breast cancer, and, and happy to see some of the guys out here supporting it this evening. So third down and five, 607 left to go in the third. Elliott moving under center this time. Looking to pass, got a man open, complete. It's number 13, Caleb Punt, and he goes in for the touchdown. Ball looked to be a little high, but Punt was able to haul it in, immediately get his head down, face the end zone, get into the corner. Looks like, you know, we always like to support the great job that these officials do. Looks like that First Academy may have got away with the block in the back right there, uh, giving Caleb Punt the opportunity to get to the outside for what makes to be a crucial touchdown for First Academy here with the potential opportunity to go up 28 nothing halfway through the third quarter. It's going to be a flag on uh, some kind of formation here, maybe a delay of game. Maybe a personal foul on the coaching staff of Central Florida Christian. I don't think they were happy about what they thought was a block in the back. Unsportsmanlike. That'll be a couple, of, well, a yard anyway, right? Not going to make a huge difference. They'll probably still line up for the kick. I don't see them going for two here. No, I wouldn't. 27 to nothing. Unless they wanted to save one of their footballs from going in the pond. <laughs> That would be the only reason that I would imagine that happening. And with my sight line, I'm going to take your word for <laughs> the uh, alleged block in the back. <laughs> you, yes, I can see. I, I can barely great, see You it. have a good shot of that. That's, we're going to have a timeout. We're going we're gonna to talk about... We're going to talk about an extra point. With some of the budget cuts that are going on across high school athletics, I seriously would think about going for two rather than kicking a $50 football out into the pond uh, behind the football field here at Eagle, Eagle Field. Maybe, uh, maybe they, <laughs> they were using a kicking ball, and they're using this timeout right now to go out and get it. Maybe that is the case. Or grab the one that they had out there earlier. Literally, I, I literally think that once a ball goes in there, it's not coming back. <laughs> it's a nice little pond. Retention pond, excuse me. Well, we almost saw Byron Masseline go into it, too. It looked like he was going to go right into that tunnel on, uh, on the last offensive series for First Academy. So if you're Central Florida Christian, are you shaking your head? You're looking at the time. You've still got 555 left to go here in the third. You could put points on the board, but so far you just have not been able to put that drive together. You want to start to, obviously this is a crucial game, 
was in the Sunshine State Conference. But you want to start just getting some momentum for your football team, building some confidence. Obviously, there's plenty of time in this football game, almost 17, almost 18 minutes left in this game to make something happen. They haven't shown thus far that they're capable of making big plays. And First Academy has shown that they are capable of doing that. But you want to get some momentum going, and you want to keep in mind that you want to keep some of your players healthy. It's a long season. Not a lot of numbers on these football teams as far as number of players. So, um, you know, still, still an opportunity to make some things happen, though. All right, your text over to the uh, coaching staff of First Academy. Sheldon Walker worked as Elliott is complete to number nine, Luke Lee, the tall tight end. So that conversion is going to be good. That will make the score 29 for First Academy as Central Florida Christian remains scoreless. You brought up the standings there in the Sunshine State North Division. Central Florida Christian currently on top of that division, but one game behind is First Academy. So this is a crucial division matchup. Very important division matchup within the conference. And First Academy maybe having one or two more players tonight that have been able to make plays uh, for their football team. Uh, and obviously for Central Florida Christian, have at times moved the ball fairly well, been able to, to uh, create some plays. And watching Central Florida Christian in warm-ups, I thought that you may see more of a passing game. It's certainly looking at stats, yep. like you've so well prepared going into this game. They were able to throw the football. And... Uh, I'm surprised that you haven't seen some of that. I don't know if that's because of what First Academy is doing on the defensive end uh, or if that was a game plan for this evening. Um, but this is certainly a part of the game where you're going to have to figure out a way to get the football down the field. And so far it looks like it's going to have to be through the air. Not a whole lot of time left if you're just going to keep running the ball. So the kickoff is up. Again, it's fielded by number 10, Josh Lyle. He's looking for some running room up the middle. Doesn't find a whole lot there. Gets it across the 30-yard line up to about the 32-yard line. And that's where Central Florida Christian will take over down 29 to nothing. And if I'm Ben Moore for Central Florida Christian Academy, I'm saying let's go, guys. Let's have some fun. You know, you don't want to put pressure on your, on your teammates. As a quarterback, they're all looking at you in the huddle uh, to help point them in the right direction. Hey, guys, let's have some fun. Let's put some points on the board. Let's have some pride about who we are on our home field uh, this evening, and let's give our shot, ourselves a shot to stay in this football game. So we got a player down on that kickoff right there. Player down here for First Academy. Looks like another cramp, Chris. That's right. It's a nice breeze, but it still was a hot day. You know, I used to suffer from cramps uh, when I was playing here locally at University High School, and about... Three or four games into my senior season, uh, I was reading on, you know, how to prevent cramps. And obviously you hear about potassium and bananas and, and how that can help. But one of the biggest things that I started doing is the night before games, I would drink a jar of pickle juice. Jar of pickle jar juice. Jar of pickle juice is, was, my, uh, was my solution or, to the problem. And I never had cramping issues again once huh. I started doing that. That's something I carried all the way uh, through college. Uh, and then you get to that level. They have some other things that you can <laughs> you can take to uh, certainly help that out. But pickle juice was uh, at the high school level was my option for uh, for helping stay away from cramps. Now, did you bring that? Uh, did you bring that to UCF and have somebody look at you a little strange? I did not bring no? it. I did not bring it. Um, you know, they they have a great training staff. Obviously, both of these teams this evening look like they have great training staffs. But uh, at UCF, they had some other ways of of uh, keeping us hydrated and and making sure that that we didn't suffer from crap, cramps. It's one of those things that's inevitable at some point. But, sure. um, you know, that was just something I always did personally to kind of alleviate that issue um, during the games. Because cramps can be, a, can be an issue if, if some of your key players start going down with them and have to come out in crucial situations sure. of a game. Now, did somebody tell you that, give you a recommendation, or is just the I had somebody awesome? tell me. I had somebody tell me. Um, and then I went and looked it up online okay. uh, and saw that, you know, it wasn't – Back in 2003, it wasn't as easy as it is today to just go on to Google and find a, a solution to everything. <laughs> um, but that's what I did, and, and, and that really helped me out. Well, it looks like Central Florida Christian is looking for a solution to their 29-point deficit, and that interception by Ben Moore is not going to be it. He had his receiver, number eight, Vaughn Diana. 
but that ball became a tip drill. First Academy hauling it in. And this game is slipping away from Central Florida Christian. Really unfortunate right there. Ben Moore put the ball maybe a little bit high, but still very very catchable by Mr. Diana. And Jonathan Punt, give him the other punt. We've heard That's a lot right. of Caleb Punt. Jonathan Punt, the other the other punt, number five, did a great job of of uh, finding the ball once it was tipped into the air, and that's something that you, you see DBs practice, the tip drill and warm-ups in a practice, and did a good job of executing it right there. 5'11", sophomore, already with a two-point conversion, and now an interception here in this game as First Academy looks to try and put this away midway through the third quarter. 542, it's the up back, Sandy Edwards. It's gonna be up just short of the first down ball be spotted at about the 22 23 yard line it may turn into the sandy edwards show here for the rest of this second half as byron Masseline still over there on the sideline after it looked like he was suffering from cramps and went out but a good opportunity for the pretty well put together 5 11 165 pound freshman in sandy edwards a good opportunity for him to get some crucial experience right here that's right he's their third leading rusher coming into this game He's going to be able to pad those stats here in the second half. Moving, man in motion, number 13, Caleb Punt, helping out with some of those running back duties with Brian Ma Byron Masseline out. Good tackle by Jonathan Howe from the defensive tackle position, made his way, excuse me, through the line and brought up a third down and five, which, which if you're a Central Florida Christian right here, if you can stop them here on third down, um, and fourth down, thinking that it's probably a, a, a two-down uh, situation for First Academy. That's a that's a big boost to your confidence from a defensive perspective. Trying to stay in this one is Central Florida Christian. Moving up to the line of scrimmage, David Elliott back under center. He has his man out to the right. That's going to be good for a first down again. It's Caleb Punt. Out across the 20 yard line up to about the 18 yard line. Good for a first down for First Academy. Great, great catch and throw for First Academy. Obviously David Elliott getting it out there to Caleb Punt. Simple slant route on third and five. Great execution, that's all you can ask for if you're a coach. Mixing in just enough passing. Keep moving those chains. Change in formation at the last second, it's Dalton Thomas. He gets the handoff, takes it up to just short of the 10 yard line. So that'll bring up second down. And about eight. Yeah. Yeah? Give or take. Close enough. Let's call it, let's call it nine for Central all right, Florida all Christian. Right, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. 325 left as the clock rolls. Byron Masseline back in. Whatever injury issue he had has been solved. He's on uh, the lower point of that wishbone. He gets the handoff, goes right back into that line. It's going to be stopped for no gain, maybe about a yard. Not a whole lot there. But now you can start working on the clock if you're first academy. Think about Central Florida Christian this evening. They've had... A Obviously, they've had two big touchdown plays that they gave up, but their defense hasn't played bad uh, in some situations. Obviously, um, you know, one of the things that they struggled at the beginning of the game was stopping the run, uh, and they've done a good job of making some adjustments. So give that defensive line and those linebackers credit uh, for forcing, forcing First Academy to have to throw the football to convert some of these first downs here in the second half, and we'll see if First Academy has to go back to the air here once again. They've put it, been put in a, a short field a couple of times by the offense. Left to defend a very short field. As First Academy has already put up 15 points here in this third quarter. We've got a flag here on this play. Again, delay a game. Well, flag backs them up about five yards. Let them bring up third down and 12. So apparently we were a little too stingy beforehand. It was uh, third and seven. <laughs> so David Elliott back in the shotgun formation. He moves Masseline in motion, fakes to him. He's going to take it himself. Get just across the 20. 
but again, a loose ball. This time, the offensive lineman for First Academy, number 55, Cameron Bedford, picks it up, moves the ball forward, as First Academy is ruled a touchdown. You know what? I have zero analysis because I'm not even sure what happened on that play. I, I took I put my eyes down to my, my call sheet once I thought it was a tackle, but apparently the ball squirted out, and I think Cameron Bedford recovered a fumble earlier That's right. for the defense, and now he recovers one for the offense. David Elliott taking it himself, puts it on the carpet, but Bedford is able to advance it forward. I have a feeling we'll check the replay. No, 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 we, no, no replay. No out replay here. tonight. No replay out here on a Friday night. So that will be seven more points after the extra point is good. That makes the score 36 for First Academy. And Central Florida Christian is stunned so far here with 157 left to go in the third. And when things aren't going your way, Chris, you you you, you get them yeah. in a third and long situation. You make a great tackle. You force a fumble. Hopefully you're going to force And then Mr. Bedford down. picks it up and scores a touchdown. That's when you know the game isn't going your way, particularly this evening. I have a feeling a Central Florida Christian head coach, Monty Van, is, uh, is getting his money's worth right now. He He's certainly is. He's had a few things to say to these officials so far in the second half. Give credit to the Eagles of Central Florida Christian Academy for playing hard, playing strong, still out here. Another quarter of football yet to be played uh, here this evening. Um, and give a lot of credit to First Academy. Came out here and has been able to execute and, and played good good product of football so far. You talked earlier about like six plays a game can really swing it. And we're seeing about five or six uh, really all of them have been you know, in favor of First Academy. Mm -hmm. But those five or six plays are really the difference here in this game. But on the kickoff, Central Florida Christian says his game isn't over. Big time return by Jordan Ogburn. He takes it all the way back to First Academy's 24-yard line on that kickoff. I'll see you your six big plays, and I'll, I'll have one for myself. That's right. Said Mr. Ogburn right there, giving Central Florida Christian Academy a little bit of life still here in the third quarter, getting inside, just inside the 30-yard line of First Academy. Let's see if some of that momentum can lift the spirits of this football team and, and create some more plays for this offense, a guy that's been on the field all night but haven't heard Ogburn's name called yet. Last week, two weeks ago, they were able to put up 48 points on Cornerstone Charter, so it's possible. Here's Moore calling his own number. Again, going that off tackle out of the two quarterback set. Not a whole lot of gain right there. Got to start to have some sort of sense of urgency here if you're Central Florida Christian. As far as staying in this football game, I don't know what we're calling this formation, <laughs> but whatever it is, I'm just going to call it 13, 2 plus 11. That's, I like it. Out of the 13, this time, it's Jordan who's going to pass it. He's got a man open. It's Josh Lyle. That's going to be right at the sticks. Keep that clock rolling. It's going to be about a yard and a half, two yards short there, bringing up third down and two. One minute left to go in the third quarter. Again, the deception of the two quarterback set. Still four wide receivers out there. Ooh. This time, Moore keeping it himself. And after what looked like getting tackled once, he was picked up and tackled a second time. We could go with 13. We could go with snake eyes. We could go with deuce. We could call it a number of different I things. I like that. I like any of them. I, I'm going to go home this evening and start tweeting about what I saw tonight <laughs> at a high school football game here in Central Florida with a formation that I've never seen in the 21 years that I've been a, a part of, of contact football. Um, and it'd be interesting to see on another evening if that formation really sets some things up for Central Florida Christian. Um, but so far, here you go. Bring up a fourth down. Have an opportunity here to to put some points on the board, which you always want to do for the home crowd. Give everybody something to cheer about. Get yourself some momentum going into the fourth quarter of a football game. Can they create some sort of play to get them two yards here is the question. So 4.24 left to go in the third quarter. 
Down 36, can't get all 36 at once. Nice sustained drive right here off of that great kickoff return. Really put more momentum on Central Florida Christian side. So they shake off the snake eyes here. Go with one wide out to the right. Ben Moore back under center. Three guys in the backfield. He's going to look to pass. He's got that one man open. It's Josh Lyle just short of the goal line. He's going to be tackled at about the three-yard line. Excellent pitch and catch right there from Moore to Lyle. Gutsy play call by Monty Van right there. We saw that same formation earlier in the game. They tried to run a reverse with Alicia. Didn't work. We're going to see that same formation right here. And this time, it's a handoff to number 20, Jared Cunningham. And he's in for the touchdown. That's what you like to see right there if you're a fan of Central Florida Christian Academy Eagles. Putting some points on the board right here before the start of the fourth quarter. And great opportunity for Jared Cunningham, the senior running back and linebacker. Get in the end zone. He's got four touchdowns so far this season. Make it five now. He's going to come back out onto the field as they're going to try for two. The lone setback is Cunningham. He's going to take it again. Almost the same play. And he's in there for the two-point conversion. So with 27.3 seconds left here in the third, First Academy is up 36 to 8 now. I must have missed the band earlier. The band. I haven't heard the band yet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the band Everybody has showed up. Love the high school band. Love the high school band. Always that time of year you hear, hear the bands playing. It's always exciting. I think in this second half, we've become more comfortable up here on the scaffolding. That's what's allowing you to see more of your surroundings, I, I, hear more of your surroundings. I cannot tell you that I was the most comfortable individual starting off for the first uh, hour and a half that we were here. Made it like a little home up here, though. That's right, folks. Uh, Kyle, is, uh, Kyle is bigger than I am, and I make sure that he <laughs> goes... Ahead of me when we go down the ladder. So if anything goes wrong, I've got a nice I'm there to soft catch landing you. spot. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're seeing a whole lot of excitement for really the first time here tonight on Central Florida Christian sideline. Haven't seen First Academy have to respond to a little bit of adversity yet this yet uh, or excuse me so far this evening. We'll see uh, how they respond here to a Central Florida Christian score. Been a while since they've had a kickoff. Could see an onside kick here. So Alicia Jordan, a little bit of everything. He takes it. That's again what they do. You're absolutely right. But up ahead for First Academy, it's number 37, Jacob Hines. Their kicker fielding that play right there. Mr. Hines is saying, hey, I know how this works. Sometimes I'm kicking these things. Kick it to me. I'll catch it. He's familiar with it. What, what can CFCA do right here to create another play? Can they create another turnover? If you can get 16 points on the board and go down by three scores in the fourth quarter, some sort of life, some sort of hope there. Right off of that kickoff return, they scored pretty quickly. Inside about three minutes, they were able to put points on the board, get that elusive drive going. The First Academy is going to look to work on that clock. Immediately the handoff. The Sandy Edwards. Taken down, gain of about one. I've got a really good vantage point for that one. I Really that, good. That's one of the first ones that you've had the entire evening. Pretty much. <laughs> but that is going to be the last play of the third quarter. As the clock rolls down here. So at the end of the third, first academy with a 36 to 8 lead over Central Florida Christian. So 12 more minutes stands between First Academy and first place in the Sunshine State North Division. When you're playing a divisional matchup after you had your pickle juice the night before, did you get a little more amped? You're a little little bouncier that day? Could you uh, have a little bit more excitement ready to go in that kind of game? Absolutely. Uh, divisional matchups, conference matchups, that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, you always want to win your conference title, uh, which would usually set you up for a playoff berth here at the high school level. 
Um, obviously, there's other ways to make it to, the, to uh, the playoffs, but if you do well in your conference, then you know that you can certainly make a way into the playoffs, which is always important. And then you see these teams year in and year out, same teams. So there's some rivalries that start to develop within your side of the conference, and it always becomes important uh, to try and, and beat those guys. Obviously, every game you want to win, but conference game, something special about those. Uh, and always try to do what you can to pull out a victory when it comes to that. So you must not have been able to even sleep before that bowl game, right? <laughs> I, I In the bowl game, I played like I didn't sleep the <laughs> night before. <laughs> First play of the fourth quarter, Whoa. Byron Masselin is back in this game. He's going to go off to the left, off to the races. He makes one move, two moves, but it's enough time for Central Florida to chase him down. He's taken down at about the 17-yard line. And just like that, any momentum that Central Florida Christian had built up is erased by Byron Masselin. He's the guy that can change the game off one run, and that's exactly what he just did. Any momentum that Central Florida Christian had, he just swept it right out from under their feet. And we'll see. They've, they've played pretty well as far as stopping the run inside the red zone today has, has Central Florida Christian, but can they stop the likes of Sandy Edwards, Brian Massline down here again? Of those six plays we were talking about for First Academy, it looks like Byron Massline has at least three or four of them. Absolutely. And Sandy Edwards stays as the uh, the workhorse up the middle for the first Academy Eagles. Got to work on some of the clock, too. You don't want to score too quickly. Got to keep that clock rolling. So he just runs straight up the middle. Gain of about two, on, no, nope, four on that one. Really noted. That's exactly what I was going to say. Great point, Chris. You want to start wearing down this clock here if you're first Academy. So naturally you go in a shotgun formation <laughs> with four wides. But you hand it to Sandy but Edwards. But you hand it off to Sandy Edwards. And he is going to take it up to a, just short of that first down. No, they're going to mark it. Good for a first down inside the five-yard line. That'll bring up first and goal for First Academy. Great run by Sandy Edwards. Great run. Great, excuse me, great blocking by the offensive line for First Academy. Created some big holes. Sandy, Sandy Edwards got up the field. It's again that spread Cut formation. Down. Making so many holes. We're going to see it again right here. Sandy Edwards back in the backfield next to Elliott. But Elliott's going to keep it himself this time. He's going to be taken down short of the line of scrimmage. Loss of about two. Who took him down? Number 12, Ralph Balderamos. Looked like he was there for the sack. And a great play by the quarterback, Ben Moore, right there. Saying, you guys have been hitting me all night. It's my turn making a great hit on the opposing quarterback. As he walked back to his position, he didn't seem to be all that thrilled after he made that hit either. <laughs> no. He's going to be a uh, sore young man tomorrow morning. So second down and six with 9.50 left to go in this one. Central Florida needing a stop here deep in their own end. This time again, First Academy looks like they're going to be called for a delay game one more time. That seemed like a... Fairly quick, yeah, fairly quick delay a game there. Not that much time running off the clock, actually, as I was watching that. Nonetheless, First Academy came out in the Wildcat formation, which may have been a reason for a longer huddle. Were they short one quarterback, you think? They were uh, waiting for that quarterback <laughs> to come in from the sideline? He was out there in the slot position. We'll see where David Elliott lines up this time. He'll be back at the quarterback position now. So I'll back him up five yards, second down at 11. Second and goal from the 11. This time it's complete. Oh. Elliott to Brian Masseline doing every kind of move possible before he is knocked out of bounds. Now they're going to say he is knocked down inbounds, just short of that goal line, up to about the three-yard line. Good ball, not for lack of trying. Masseline... Trying to do everything he can to break free and get into the end zone. One of the things we were talking about at the beginning of the game, Chris, was getting your playmakers into space with the football, and that's just another example of a First Academy trying to do a good job of that, finding ways to get the ball out into space to their to their playmakers and uh, gets them just a little bit closer to the goal line. Byron Masseline with three receptions coming into this one. He's had a few already. Elliott looking on that other side, wide open. 
to number one, Dalton Thomas, and he walks into the end zone here in this one. Great play call by the first academy coaching staff, and I'm sorry, I don't have their names in front of me, but they've done a great job of play calling this evening. Sheldon Walker, uh, head coach for First Academy, great job by his offensive staff of putting together a great play game plan this evening. Uh, and just another example of great execution and being able to find Dalton Thomas out in the flat uncovered for the touchdown. Everybody went left, and there was Dalton Thomas off to the right. Here the extra point try is going to be a little low. A little low. High snap. Good job of, by David Elliott of getting that ball, that snap down on the ground. Unfortunately, a lot of the Central Florida Christian team was through the line at that point. But That's four, true. 42 to 8 here. Keeps the score to 42 to 8 with 8.18 left to go. A lot of you may be wondering if this is the time to bring in the second team. Well, when you've only got 20 players on one sideline and 20 player, 21 players on the other, you're watching the second team. That is the second team. It's the first team. You know, I really feel for the, these teams, Chris, to have to, to play both ways. I can't imagine having to do that myself in my playing days. There's no way I would have been able to personally survive going both ways. But you've got to give a lot of credit to both play, all the players on both of these football teams for really playing a tough football game this evening. It's been a lot of contact, a lot of hard hitting, a lot of running, and, and they've, they've done their best to stay in there and, and, uh, and keep fighting on both sides of the ball. First Academy with 108 enrolled in just high school. 108 in the total high school enrollment. At University High School, my freshman year, we had 5,400 in high school. So you're saying your high school experience was different? Is that, is that what A little mean? bit. <laughs> A little bit. Central Florida fielding that one. Number one, Jordan Ogburn. Trying to make something happen, but he's taken down at the, his own 28-yard line. That's where Central Florida will take over. They'll do what they can. Try and keep this one. Maybe see a few other faces. A couple of different opportunities for Central Florida Christian. But it looks like Ben Moore is going to stay in there. And looks like the officials holding things up right here. 7.52 left to go in this one. So Ben Moore handing it off to number one, Jordan Ogburn. He's going to be taken down after a gain of about five there on that play. I was wondering when they were going to find ways to start getting Mr. Ogburn the football in his hands. Been playing the slot receiver position most of the evening, but shoot, showed on that kickoff return just a little bit ago that he has some speed and has some agility. And, and now they're going to be able to see if he can uh, make some plays from the running back position. This time, Ben Moore looking to pass. They're going to say he is down. So he is going to be sacked for a loss of about four on that one. That'll bring up third down and eight. Chase down from behind. Great job of staying home by the first academy defense. They were not fooled by the play action bootleg. Trying to get Ben Moore on the edge to deliver the football downfield. Unable to do so, which like you said, Chris, brings up a third and long situation here. Yeah, it looks like a lot of shoulders are down here on the Central Florida Christian sideline. So Ben Moore is going to keep it himself out of the shotgun formation, trying to get that first down. He's going to be up close. They're going to bring up fourth down. I'm going to say he is just short. Going to mark him down short. And again, Ben Moore coming up a little gimpy there. He's looking to the sideline for the play. Fourth down and one. Eagles needing to go for it here. At their, at, they're going to call a timeout. Give Ben Moore a chance to catch his breath. To figure out what's going on there with his left leg. A 
you don't like to use a timeout right there, but I guess it's crucial at this point in the game that this first down is more important than anything else at this point. So get your team together. Let them catch their breath. Make sure your quarterback is able to perform as far as the injury it looks like he has to his left ankle. See if you can't convert a fourth down here and keep this drive going. Because turning over the ball on downs at this point would surely basically seal the victory for First Academy. I would say so. If that has not happened already. If that already. already hasn't happened, that's true. That's true. How difficult is it to try to keep your head in a game like this for down 42 to 8? Well, Chris, I've never lost a game. No, like that all right. So no, no, <laughs> just no, kidding. No, by, by it's difficult. Big a margin? It is difficult. Like I said, we, you know, my freshman campaign at UCF, we were 0-11, uh, and it's not always easy. Uh, but the bright spot for for Central Florida Christian is keeping in mind that they are three and one on the season. Um, you know, they still have a lot of games ahead of them, and you want to stay fairly healthy this evening if you can with six minutes left. But it's hard. It's it's hard to rally the troops when you when you're down this late in a football game. That's right. Next week, they've got another division matchup with Masters Academy. That'll be right here at home at Eagle Field. Oh, and they and tried to flag right there. Tried to draw the defense offside and ended up jumping themselves. It's going to take them back five yards. We'll put that on the pile of tape they're going to have to watch over the course of this next week. I think we're standing next to the tape that they're going to watch. So that'll bring up fourth down and six with 548 left to go here in this one. Again, the two quarterbacks set. The snake eyes set. Almost seemed like they could fuse themselves there. This time, it's Alicia Jordan who keeps it. Gets around the edge. He's got enough for the first down. He's up to the 45-yard line. That keeps the Eagles on the field, moving the ball forward. The clock will stop briefly here for the first down. Great individual effort by Alicia Jordan right there. Play really breaking down, and he's saying... You know what, I'm going to try to get a first down for my football team here and doing just that, extending this drive for CFCA. It seemed like they were confused on who was actually going to take the snap, and then you had Jordan run into Moore. But it worked out one way or the other. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all of their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Play on Sports is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com, high school sports lives here. So the clock starts to roll again, 5.31 left to go. Moore dropping back to pass. A little high to his intended receiver, Josh Lyle, coming across the middle right there. That'll stop the clock, though, at 5.24 left to go. Stops the clock, and you can now see how this evening has kind of progressed. First Academy looks pretty fresh. Yes. Uh, and Central Florida Christian looks really tired having to fight back in this football game. And, and that was something endurance, you said at the beginning of the game, that we were going to have to look at. Two quarterback set this time goes to Jordan. He was looking to pass. He's going to be ruled down here on this one. Had Mr. Ogburn open down the sideline. Looked like he was ready to go to him. He didn't have his hands on the laces. I don't know if... I certainly didn't like throwing the football without my hands on the laces, but nonetheless, um, going to bring up, like you said, Chris, third down and long here. Third and 12, 5'10". On the clock. Again, the snake eyes formation. This time it's Jordan. Wanted to pass. Still wants to pass. Rolling out. Ball slips out of his hand, and it will fall incomplete at about the first down marker. But that'll bring up fourth and 12 with 5.54 left to go. And once again, that's why I don't like to throw the ball without the laces because yeah. that's exactly what happens, especially when the field's a little bit damp. A lot of rain came through earlier this evening uh, prior to this football game. Uh, and, you know, the laces are on the football for a reason. So 
Uh, if, if you can't grab a hold of them, it makes it difficult to throw it. We really have been lucky with the weather. Absolutely. It's been a beautiful night after the rain has passed through. It's a fourth down and 12. Here it is for Central Florida. Christian. This time it's Moore. He's going to pitch it back to Jordan. He's going to pass it. Pass is broken up by the quarterback on the other side for First Academy. It's David Elliott. I like the play call right there. A little Just trickery on top of a good, solid option down that left side. Give some credit to David Elliott for coming over and staying home and making a play, but that play with Josh Lyle was there for the reception if Elliott didn't make that play for the first down. It's a little short on the pass. Need to go a little bit further. And now as you get into First Academy, just under five minutes left to go, you start to get into your four-minute offense. Four-minute offense, everybody hold on to the football. Stay in bounds. Don't take any unnecessary penalties. I anticipate an awful lot of Sandy Edwards right here. Nope. Byron Masseline. He's going to go back. He's going backwards. And he's going to go bring it all the way back. Flag down on the field. Masseline doing every trick in the book to try and get free. Eventually goes out the left sideline. We're going to check that flag. That is more than likely going to be a bad block somewhere along the way. Block in the back right there. Block in the back. Gosh, can't say enough about Byron Masseline, the ability that he has, the speed, his athleticism, the ability to make guys miss. He's going to have an opportunity to be a very, very good back. Only a junior. We'll have another year to come back for the Eagles. And, and a guy looking at him could be able to play football at some level uh, as far as college football is concerned uh, when his days here at First Academy are over. You used to hand it off to a pretty short, pretty effective back, right? Yeah, yeah. Kevin Smith was uh, second leading rusher in NCAA <laughs> history in single season, which was my senior season. It was... Uh, Always nice to be able to turn around and hand the ball off to somebody you knew was probably going to get positive yards every down. It's a pretty good safety net to have. Yeah, right absolutely. Behind, I had the best seat in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Another delay a game? Yeah. Well, staying consistent. Wow. Is that four? I count four delay a game penalties on First Academy. That's They're a, moving backwards here. Pretty quick. Uh, the the umpires is certainly starting his the playcock yeah. fairly quickly. You think he's got an itchy trigger finger there with that flag? I don't know. Maybe at this point in the game, I would say that may be the case. At this point in the game, he should be keeping his hands off of that flag. No? Absolutely, absolutely. You don't want to get anybody hurt and extend these fo football games longer than you need to. So 3:42 left to go. Elliott rolling out to his left. He's going to keep it himself. He can be dangerous running out there by himself. Trying to get back some of that yardage on first and 30. And, and I'm a little bit confused. Maybe you can help me, Chris. They signal for the clock to still be running, but Elliott did go out of bounds. He did go out of bounds. I believe the score where it is, 42 to 8. Keeps He's going to keep that clock. rocking. Okay. This late in the game, you'll usually see a running clock with scores like that. Absolutely. So it brings up second down and 23 with three minutes even left to go in this fourth quarter. Hand off to Dalton Thomas. He stopped just short of that line of scrimmage. As First Academy has looked like they might pass on the rollouts, but then they're keeping it on the ground, keeping that clock rolling. 2.38 left to go. I wouldn't be surprised on this third down if you don't see a run by Sandy Edwards up the middle around the end or if uh, they decide to, uh, to try to pass it here but no receivers out wide. Next week First Academy plays Cornerstone Charter Academy. We'll see if they're working on anything. They're working on trying to get that first down right here. It's number five, Jonathan Punt. He is eventually brought down out of bounds. And now at you're the confusing me. Five yard line, and now the <laughs> clock has stopped. <laughs> I suppose. 
Well, the last play, David Elliott was taken down inbounds. I, I How about don't, that? How about, uh, do you like that explanation? Let, let's call it that. That's exactly what happened. Except he was never tackled, <laughs> so I'm still not sure. <laughs> I thought he was pushed out of bounds, too. I had a perfectly logical explanation for you. <laughs> but now the clock has stopped with 2.11 left to go in the fourth quarter. Well, well spotted at the 45-yard line of Central Florida Christian. If I'm the coach of First Academy, I say, if you run to the right, fall down before you get out of bounds. If you run to the left, just run out of bounds. They get back to the <laughs> original, almost the original line of scrimmage. And can we make it, make it five? Make it five on delay game. Well, I uh, got to give credit to the great job the officials have done this evening. But, talk uh, about the letter of the law, right? I guess if you're going to be consistent, that is, that's what you want. That is consistency. Well, if you're a coaching staff, you ask for consistency. From the back judge, consistent. From the side judges, stop the clock sometimes and keep it going others. So fourth down and 16. <laughs> They're going to punt, because why not? Central Florida Christian lets that ball just bounce. Number 10, Josh Lyle, letting that ball be downed at about the 24-yard line. With 2.02 left to go. Clock is going to stop there for a change of possession. Cer I'm fairly certain of that one. Yes, <laughs> I would hope so. S Sergio Porta. Number 50 for CFCA, number 55, Jonathan Howe. Getting their first playing time this evening. Great to get everybody in the game. Two minutes left. See if you can uh, get some more points on the board, get some more stats in the book for your uh, your athletes here if you're Central Florida Christian. Those are some of the bigger players there on Central Florida Christian. But Ben Moore looking very deep. This time he's going to be picked off again. His own man got picked off by the official this time it's intercepted by david elliott quarterback on the other team he's going to take it all the way back for a touchdown pick six to punctuate this one for first academy great play by david elliott making his way up the sideline defense turned around made some good blocks once that once that ball was intercepted great overall play defensively by first academy there and and you you look at that pass Chris, and Ben Moore shows that he has an arm there. He looked like he wanted it. I mean, that that's great. They're fighting to the very end. You've got to like that if you're a coaching staff. His, uh, his intended receiver, Josh Lyle, picked by the official, taken out of the play, leaving the door wide open for David Elliott to pick that one off. Some last-second changes here on the extra point, and it's going to be blocked by Ben Moore. Ben Moore doing a little bit of everything here in this one. Including spending an awful lot of time in the ice tub later on. Oh, that will make the score 48 to 8. First Academy with 144 left to go. This is one of the longer last four minutes of football games that I've seen in a while. For as fast as they scored that touchdown at the end of the third quarter, this last four minutes of what looked to be a pretty sizable lead has taken quite a while. You know, Chris, we really thought that this game uh, may be hampered by the weather, but it's like we've mentioned already, that storm front must have held off to the west. It looked pretty uh, ominous kind of on the radar prior to this game starting. I thought I was going <laughs> to be drenched by the end of this one. I, I, mean, I had my jacket on right up until halftime, and... I'm taking it off. It's a beautiful night. This has been one of the uh, rainier, f I don't know if this is correct grammar, so forgive me, but one <laughs> of the more rainier football seasons, yes. uh, more rain this, seasons, this season than I've seen in years past, certainly. Well, you get that afternoon moisture correction, but it's been uh, drifting later and later in this season. So, again, you've been looking for Jordan Ogburn after he had that big return in the third quarter. He was trying to pull off another one right there. Gets that ball up close to midfield. That's where Central Florida Christian will take over. 128 left to go. Yeah, now they just start the clock. Now it's running. I now think it's, it's 35 points. We were one point shy of that running clock a few minutes ago, but that score is going to put it over the top. 
It sure did, 48 to eight your score here as that clock rolls. Two quarterback set. Again, it's Jordan. He's gonna try and go deep, but he's sacked. Dropped for about a four yard loss. That's gonna bring up second down and I don't know, 14. Let's give credit to Audie Bass, the center for CFCA. He's had to snap it to two guys all night. It's, That's true. You know, He's been high, but he has kept it. You know, you got to have that subtle angle left or right. right. It can't be easy. Again, it's Jordan. Like you've said, he's had a tough time with the laces, controlling some of the ball here in the second half. Yeah, I like to see everybody stay, stay healthy here towards the end of this football game. Starts to get a little bit sloppy when everybody's tired. Game seems to be a little bit out of hand here, and the clock is running down. Coach Van still coaching hard till the end, though. Looks like one more final snake eyes formation. And I think Ben Moore would like that to be his last possession of the night. As the clock rolls, six seconds left. Not going to be enough time for another play. So that is going to do it here in this one. Well, certainly not the outcome that I was expecting going into the game, Chris. We expected a whole lot more offense on both sides. But uh, I'll tell you what, we hope you'll stay with us on the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. We're going to talk, wrap this one up. But your final score, First Academy Eagles 48 and Central Florida Christian Eagles 8. We'll be right back with more on the PlayOnSports.com postgame show in just a couple of minutes. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? You start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Two or three. Welcome back to Ocoee, Florida, and the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. I'm Chris Cause alongside Kyle Israel. We just saw the first Academy Eagles defeat the Central Florida Christian Eagles 48-8. to And, Kyle, for so much of this game, we talked about the big plays that would swing one way or another, and Brian Masseline was the one who swung more than anybody else. Absolutely. Byron Masseline did a great job. Uh, this evening, and, and I'm sure he would say, got to give some credit to my offensive line, but the way that he ran the football uh, tonight, the cuts that he made, the athletic ability that he has uh, certainly deserved uh, the MVP uh, for this game this evening, and, and a guy that I was excited to see going into this football game, he certainly did not disappoint uh, with his play tonight, but a lot of guys uh, for the first academy team as a whole, all 21 of them just did a great job this evening. And you can tell by looking at the scoreboard with a 48-8 victory, that's a team win. Uh, and they did it not only on the offensive side of the football as far as scoring points is concerned, but also on the defensive side of the football. Um, and, and, and it was a great game to watch for first academy. A touchdown rushing, a touchdown receiving for Brian Masseline. So he is our player of the game. And that's going to wrap it up from Eagle Field where... The First Academy Eagles defeated the Central Florida Christian Eagles 48-8. We'd like to thank you for joining PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Friday Night Football from Ocoee, Florida. Be sure to check PlayOnSports.com for information and links to all of our upcoming broadcasts. For our producer, Richard Thomas, our videographer, Sean Oliver, and my partner, Kyle Israel, I'm Chris Cause saying so long. We hope you'll join us next Friday night on your destination for high school sports and Friday Night Football, PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. This.